welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the layers of the epidermis. So the epidermis is going to be all of this right here. Right? It's going to have the strand basale, also known as germinotobum, spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, and corneum. So all these layers are coming together to form the epidermis. Next thing we got is let's focus on the stratum basale, also known as germinotobum. And so what happens? This is the basal layer, the bottommost layer right here. And so this is right next to the dermis, and the dermis actually has a really good blood supply, which is important because the stratum basale, that bottommost layer, has a function. It germinates. It's creating new skin cells. And that's why it's called the stratum germinotomum. Well, if you know anything about babies, they eat a lot of food compared to their body size. Um, you know, I think children... A newborn baby consumes about four times the amount of calories pound per pound compared to an adult, right? And so these skin cells, because they're babies, they're constantly reproducing very, very fast using tons of resources. So we need an excellent blood supply. And so we're going to be right next to that dermis so we get all the nutrients and oxygen that we need. All right, now that our skin cells are leaving the stratum basale, right, we're going to the stratum spinosum our skin cells, the major skin cell, which is the keratinocytes, are linking together. And so we're holding these skin cells nice and tight uh, and so they don't rip apart, right? Very, very important layer here. And so that's gonna be your stratum spinosum. Now, the next skin layer is going to be the stratum granulosum. So you look right here, I'm really far away from that dermis. And so it's gonna be very hard for the stratum granulosum to get the blood, the nutrients that it needs, right? Because it's having to diffuse through all these layers of skin that have been sucking out oxygen, carbon dioxide, and so on. It's gonna be very hard for the stratum granulosum to get rid of its waste, right? I have to somehow get my waste all the way over here into the blood supply. And so because it's very hard to get the food I need and get rid of the waste I don't want, um, these cells are gonna start dying. And so before they die, they're making these little granules in here and these little granules are called keratin uh, and this is going to make your skin tough and durable it also makes your skin waterproof all right now this next layer is the stratum lucidum so if you look under the microscope you're not going to be able to see this right it's lucid it's clear right so you have to have to use special dyes in order to be able to see this what you're going to typically see is you're going to see uh, the stratum corneum, then there's going to be this gap here, and then there's going to be the stratum granulosum, right? And so this lucid, this clear layer is only seen in thick skin. Where do you have thick skin? Palms of your hands, soles of your feet. So high wear tear areas. Next thing we have is the stratum corneum. So this layer right here is the outermost layer of the skin, all right? Uh, and so, as you can see, we're just constantly ripping it off, right? And so the reason why we don't run out of stratum corneum is because that stratum granulosum is constantly making new skin cells. And so these skin cells are slowly but surely making its way up through the layers, and eventually we scrape them off. Uh, one of the things that determines the thickness of the stratum corneum is basically two factors. Number one, how fast we're cranking out these cells, right? If I'm cranking out these cells very quickly, uh, it's going to make this a lot thicker. Another thing is your stratum granulosum, right? So what's happening is I produce a keratin, and that's going to make these skin cells extra tough. So if these skin cells are really tough, it's going to be a lot harder to rub them off. The other thing is how fast am I ripping them off, right? So you know, if I don't really do anything, I'm not really tearing apart the stratum corneum very much. But if I'm doing a lot of things, I'm ripping it off a lot faster, right? Uh, now, the good news in that situation is we're actually stimulating the stratum granulosum to produce keratin, which is, once again, going to make it harder to rip off the stratum corneum, which will help it get thicker. That's how we get our calluses. Now, a nice acronym to help you remember these layers in order. Once again, the germinotobum the spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, and corneum is that good students generally love class. Well, how on earth am I going to remember the basale then? You know, 
So a way to remember basale, spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, and corneum is that bad students generally leave class. So hopefully that helps. Now, this picture right here, you can see this black squiggly line I've done here. This is actually your melanin. So most of our melanin is actually in the bottom part of our skin, actually primarily in the stratum basale or germinotopum. Um, and so we do have some in the higher layers of the skin, but not as much. Okay, uh, now these red lines is UV radiation, right? So this UV radiation is coming down here uh, through the layers of the skin. Now this is what can cause cancer. And so the good news is the UV is coming up here. And so where is most of the UV going to hit? Well, it's going to hit these top layers of the skin. Well, guess what? I can't get cancer in a cell that's already dead, right? You can't cause cancer here. All right. What about this stratum uh, granulosum? Well, if I this cell turns cancerous, what's going to happen? It's going to be pushed out this way. So this cell is actively dying, right? If I'm having a heart attack right now, uh, you know, I'm not worried about lung cancer. Why? Who cares that I have lung cancer? I'm dying of a heart attack, right? Same idea right here. Who cares if this cancer, uh, this cell has turned cancerous? It's actively dying, right? So not an issue here, right? Um, likewise, this UV coming all the way down here, hitting in the stratum spinosum. Okay, that's more concerning because it does have a good blood supply, right? Right here, we're near the dermis. Uh, but guess what? It's being pushed further and further away from that blood supply. And hopefully, it will get all the way over here where it starts dying and is dead, right there. So in order for you to get skin cancer, this UV has to hit all the way down here, pretty much in the stratum basale or germinotopum. That way, it's right next to excellent blood supply. It's not being pushed further and further away from its good blood supply. And that way, it can continue to multiply and divide. So really incredible wisdom in terms of the way the body is set up. That the layer that's the most vulnerable to the UV radiation is going to be the most shielded from UV radiation. And the layer that's the most exposed to UV and uh, all sorts of different chemicals that we come in contact with it's already dead, so we can't get cancer there. So very brilliant setup there. All right, and so this right here is just showing you, look, here's the epidermis. This is what we've been talking about, and we're right next to that dermis. So it has a great blood supply from the dermis if you're this bottommost layer. This top layer, no, it's not gaining blood supply, but it doesn't matter because this topmost layer is dead. All right. And so this is where I'm getting the links to my pictures from. All right, that concludes today's episode. If you liked what you heard, be sure to click the subscribe and like button down below. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if there's any particular topic you'd like me to create a video on, let me know in the comments down below. All right, well, I look forward to seeing you on my next podcast.